Everybody knows I like I like first edition. I know I'm an old man, and um, I was preparing some stuff for for a, a, a group of people that were going to come over about a week or so ago, and uh, one was a magic user, and I thought, okay, what are some cool kind of magic items that I could leave around for some treasure? And I thought, yeah, crystal ball would be kind of cool, but man, eh, it's so plain and. What about a crystal skull? Yeah, like, yeah, like those ones they were digging up in South America and Central yeah. America and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool, but what could it do? And I thought, well, what if it had like gemstone eyes that shot different beam weapons out of it that's for cool. the different colors? That's really cool. And so I went nuts and I painted something. I just finished it this morning. So, so here we go. So here we go, Ben. I just, I just, I flashed it to Ben. He still hasn't seen the whole thing, like right in front of him. Yeah. So Ben, why don't you show that to the for the audience here. Yeah, I just saw this picture for the first, it's a completed gouache painting here, but I just saw it for the first we'll time. We'll get you guys a scan of it here. About uh, 30 seconds ago, 30, 15 <laughs> seconds before we started this episode. I was like, what are we gonna talk about next? He's like, let's talk about this. I'm like, all right, <laughs> I'll hit play. <laughs> I'll hit record. <laughs> so here's what I was thinking. All right, that is my idea. So this crystal skull is like a thing for magic users. And uh, when you get it, um, whether it comes with the gemstones in its eyes or comes with a bag that you switch them in and out is, is up, probably up to the game master to discuss or how much he wants to reveal. But each colored stone would be a different beam weapon that you would shoot out of a thing. And it would be like a remote that would kind of follow you around like the little remote in a Star Wars movie. Oh, cool. So just kind of follow you around. And the higher level of magic user you are, the further away it can go. And you can cast spells through it like a familiar. But... Because this thing is so powerful, it's almost, it's not quite a Death Star, but it's real close. It's going to do some pretty weird things to you. So let's say you cast, it's got gems, red gemstones in its eyes. It's some kind of fire beam weapon, right? But that'll take maybe 1d4 months off your life. You age. Ooh. So it comes out of your, instead of pumping it full of magic spells and stuff, what it does is it sucks your life force out. And of course, if you put the black gemstones in its eyes and you use death magic, that's 1D, 1D4 years that your character um, may have to age in order to cast these, use this thing. And of course, any time, it's all mine, because you just pull the thing out and you put it in your backpack, because you probably don't want to walk into town with this thing hovering around you. Yeah. That might scare people. Yeah, it could be, make people a little uncomfortable. But when you get to the dungeon, you pull this little guy out, and he's flying around and doing stuff, and, and you can see through his eyes, too. Oh, that'd you know, be send cool. him into rooms and stuff. So it's pretty powerful, but to use it, it it's really going to... Anyway, that was my idea. I like it. Mm -hmm. So, two questions. Number one yeah. is, is it somebody's skull or is it a piece of is it an art no it's art okay yeah it's actually carved from crystal and the skull itself is magic not necessarily the gems yeah because you can buy gems and that could be up to the to the dungeon master's discretion um again which color does what we'll, we'll probably give a range of maybe i don't know three to three to six colors you know suggestions of what these could be and so is there like a spirit of so if it's Draining all of your health and stuff. What makes what I think of is that like maybe there's like the spirit of something in it. Like it can communicate with you telepathically. Yeah, it, it kind of can. It's mm -hmm. just like it's almost like a familiar. Yeah, almost. Yeah, like you, you could like it's trying to like dominate your mind or something, right? Like where it's trying Possibly. to talk to you, or yeah. you can have conversations with it or something. It may have an ego to it. Yeah. Okay, and that could be because it's this powerful. It probably probably should have. I think it should. So that you're kind of wrestling with this thing because it is so powerful, you don't want to... Because there's know, that mechanic. You don't want to like, give a nuclear weapon to a second level character, you know, yeah. and have them just fired off. And yeah, like it made its previous owner insane or whatever, and like, uh, yeah, there's there's mechanics in these games for, uh, for cre uh, magic items with ego, yes. where like every time you tell it to do something it doesn't want to do, it has like a mental battle with you and you yeah, have to you have kind to of, do with kind of a saving throw kind of thing or yeah, to deal. not like have it have you be told what to do by it right like yeah. the magic item orders you around so with this what i'm thinking i mean i'm picturing this as like the magic user finds this during your campaign and then i think you do have to have special gems for it and i think that it'll be kind of a thing where it's like well you heard there's a special gem over and it's an easy way to get your magic user to go into any kind of whatever uh, dungeon yeah. you want sure oh in the garden of terror there's a uh, there's a magic gem so you know you don't have to do the mission but if you do there's a magic gem for you mm -hmm. waiting there mm -hmm. 
It's the kind of thing that, like, as the campaign goes, the magic user will continually be looking for these looking things. for gems to put in the eyeballs to cast a different beam. Yeah. yeah, and I think the the drawbacks should be different things. Mm -hmm. So I think it's I think if you're gonna if you want to see out of this thing's eyes, you have to use the gem that's the gem of seeing or whatever. The oh, blue gem yeah. allows you to see out of this thing's eyes, and you send it into a room. But for every minute that you do that, you know it drains your you know, charisma by one. Temporarily mm -hmm. for a mm -hmm. couple hours, or maybe or constitution or something sure. like that. Sure, yeah, you get a little weaker. Yeah, you or... get tired because you're yeah. using that energy to, to mm -hmm. see through the thing's eyes. So it'll drain that score for a little bit. One of them, it's like the, maybe the, the the fire ray. It's like it'll do a bunch of damage, but you get a little bit of feedback from that. Where mm. like, or maybe if it's like a shock damage, like an electrical damage, mm -hmm. you'll take a little bit of the electrical damage back. It reflects it back on you. Uh, the death magic is the one that will age you by a year every time you yeah. use it. So each different gym would does have, different uh, mal effects to you, yeah. depending on how you. I like that because what's going to happen is like if See, it ages Ben's you, pretty smart actually. What's going to happen is if it ages you a year, the player's not going to want to use it that much. They yeah. might just sell it. Sure. So you want to have basically like a basic attack that it does. It can attack, make a ranged touch attack. Mm -hmm. uh, it can shoot a ray that does a normal amount, a not insane amount of damage, mm -hmm. and it doesn't do that much back to you. Sure. So you use it for that. But, you know, if you want to swap out for something else, it has, you know, five to six different powers that it yeah. can you can switch out. I like that. And it takes a little bit of time. You can't do it in the middle of a battle yeah. and switch the colors. You have to have it ready to go. Yeah, you have to pop the eyes out and pop the new ones mm -hmm. in and, like, basically reload it like a gun. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then... Like a muzzle loader. It takes yeah. you a little bit of time to ram this sucker yeah. down. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have it ready. You can't do that in the middle of a... Fight with someone's point, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can't just be like, oh no, well, I switch over to death. Yeah, hold on a second, let me just, yeah, death. Yeah, there's some gems that will only work against certain types of things. Sure. You know? Yeah. So some of that stuff Especially could be really... if they have like resistance to like a cone of frost or something, or resistance yeah. to fire and things, they're not gonna, yeah. Yeah, like some could, yeah, and then this thing can kind of, one will like, it'll see secret doors. Right. If you pl if you have the secret door gem plugged in, it'll see where the secret doors are, or see magical objects or whatever. Sure. Yeah. I mean, the sky's the limit. Here. Yeah. Different and then colors be different, can do different things. Yeah. And then there'll be different like negatives, but they'll mm -hmm. all be related to how powerful the sure. thing it does is. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you get a sniffle yeah. if you uh, use to to see the you know. You get a headache. Yeah. You get a headache. <laughs> uh, death magic. You get a big headache. Yeah. You get a big headache. It's gonna cost you. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. All right. Love I'm it. excited to write this. Yeah. Sounds great. <laughs> and we're gonna do another piece of artwork too. Uh, we'll we'll have a magic user casting. Yeah. yeah. You have to take a, He has to take a picture of my fiance. Yes, I have to. Take, I have to take a picture of her. So. She's gonna model. She's gonna be the model for the magic user. Exactly. Well, she will be my fiance by the time this airs. Oh yeah. I'll be married. That's right. You'll be married. <laughs> Holy. Yes. <Yeah>, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. See you then. <laughs> bye bye. Howdy, everybody. Hey, how's we're it going? Back. Ben, we're going to finish up the crystal skull. We are. Yes. I have a very sad news for you, though, about uh -oh. the crystal skull. <laughs> what, what happened? So, Brian has the thing set up to record himself film, uh, doing the artwork for everything. Mm -hmm. But it's the same file names every time, and I didn't save it into the same file, so I lost you painting the first painting. Oh, really? I have you painting the second one. But I saved over you painting the first one. Well, these are the way things go. Yeah, yeah. We're still learning. But we got the painting here. We got the painting. We can show you that in real life, <laughs> real time. Yeah. And uh, Ben, you came up with a whole bunch of cool stuff, didn't you? Came up with a whole bunch of cool stuff. <laughs> uh, so mostly, what I started with was the crystal skulls are like a historical thing. Yeah. That's like an actual yeah, like, they really are. magic, like you know, historical occult artifact mm -hmm. kind of deal, and. They're very interesting because they started popping up as an Aztec thing. Mm -hmm. But they were popping up with, like, there was a British explorer that I wrote an article about on my website once called uh, F.A. Mitchell Hedges. He found one. Uh, this French guy found one. And we later found out that they were all bogus. Mm. So a lot of these very nice crystal skulls, because the Aztec uh, society had a lot of really cool stuff with skulls. and uh, But they tested the one. So... I was at the British Museum, and I, I went there. I was in England while we were working on this project, yeah. and I went to the British Museum, and I found the crystal skull, skull that they have there. And it's really cool, and they have a whole thing on it where, like, we had this displayed as an authentic crystal skull for decades before, like, 
this German team did a uh, did a study on it, and they found that the quartz had been mined in Brazil, and that it had been machined with with steel tools, probably like it, roughly around this time. And they named it to like the 1870s, and the thing had been given to the British Museum in like 1874 or something. Oh, okay. But it was interesting because the museum got it from. So the uh, the the skull had been given to Tiffany's. It had been sold to Tiffany's. Oh, really? In Piccadilly Circus, and it was in their window for a long time. And then when that store closed, they gave the skull to the British Museum, and they put it in the museum. Oh, okay. But it's very cool. It's very cool to look at. Yeah. It's interesting because it's it's. Uh, quartz and it's or crystal or whatever and it's clear so it you know it, it looks really cool like it's almost completely see-through yeah so it's very neat and um, I did see some really cool Mayan and Aztec stuff that was really awesome while I was there too right so they had this one piece that was really messed up and scary looking where it was just like uh, turquoise and like rubies and stuff over top of a real human skull oh wow and that was really neat looking so I'll put videos of that up when we're doing yeah. this um, they had the Olmec heads. They had like they had a lot of stuff that was similar, but it turns out that the crystal skull. They say it wasn't part of this, but I just thought that but was guess kind of what in D and D it is real. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the things so because this is like an, an occult thing, and there's a whole following around these crystal mm -hmm. skulls. There are some things that are associated with them. So they're said to, uh, especially Mitchell Hedges and his daughter Anna Mitchell Hedges also found one, and they were very big into like promoting these and. Um, what they said was that uh, they would, um, uh, let me see, it was, you could see visions, they had mm. healing powers, mm. and uh, they could, like, uh, you know, somebody said they cured their cancer, Anna Mitchell Hedges said she killed a guy with a crystal skull one time, wow. using her mind. Wow. Uh, so, uh, there was a thing in the, around, like, the Y2K, or no, the Mayan Apocalypse. Oh, Remember yeah. that stuff? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, so they said that there were 13 in the world, and if you reunited all of them, it would stop the Mayan Apocalypse. That was a, <laughs> that was a thing that popped up. So anyway, I thought this was really cool. Must have happened, because <laughs> we're still <Yeah>. here. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been the Indiana Jones yeah, movie. That yeah, that's, that should have been the Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> anyway, so what we came up with, what I came up with was that this is going to be in like a... a Aztec style tomb, right? Which is where you would find this, and uh, maybe jaguar warriors mm -hmm. and quetzalcoatls yeah. and that kind of stuff. Um, but one thing that I thought would be really neat for this would be to keep it from as a powerful artifact, but from being too powerful, is that this is a thing that you find. You find the skull as a. It's a thing that can be like a side quest for your wizard character throughout the course of the campaign. Mm -hmm. You find the skull, and maybe there's one set of gems in there, and then as you go on, if you want to kind of force the party into places that they wouldn't normally go into, you can hint that there might be more gems there. And that's kind of a cool way to go and get all of the different gems. Yeah. And so what I came up with for the gems was that there would be, let's, let me see, uh, one, two, three, four, five, eight. Eight gems. Okay. One for each school of magic. Oh, okay. And so when you pop the gems into the skull, they do different things, right? Uh, each one has a constant effect that's tied to that school of magic. Each one has a small power that you can use two plus your intelligence modifier times per day, a uh, lesser power. And then one, it has a, one of them has a bigger power that you can only use once a day. And uh, I think that these powers would be, you know, the two plus intelligence and the one big power would be, a cro would be tied to the skull and not the gem. Oh, so like okay. if you wanted to use the red gem's big power, you couldn't just immediately switch it over and use the green gem's big power. Uh, switching gems takes a, a full round. You have mm -hmm. to pop them out, pop the new ones in, so that you can't just like swap them. It's like reloading a gun, sure. basically. Yeah. Uh, but they all kind of do different numbers of things, right? The, the 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 skull can like hover around, hovers one foot around you per two levels that you are, and it can operate in like any above, below, but it has mm -hmm. to maintain this tether of a foot per two levels. So when you get to be a higher level, the thing can fly a little bit further out. Sure. It can do other things. Um, and so, kind of some examples of it is, so the, uh, the, the, the divination spell, the divination school of magic is a topaz. It's a light blue, and divination is about scrying, prophecy, and foresight. Uh, so when you, there's always a trade-off for the constant effect. So when you have the, uh, the divination gem in the skull, you can see through the skull. 
Uh, mm-hmm. You can move it around the corner and peek and see what's going on. You can you, you can have like the vision of what this thing is. Oh, gotcha. But what that does for you is it makes you personally less aware. So it messes up your perception checks mm. because you're looking through the eyes of this thing and trying so to keep track of what's going around. So you got kind of a magic it. tunnel vision. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so gives you maybe it gives you a, a little bit less to your initiative too. Mm-hmm. Um, but once a day, you can you can use it a number of times to either like detect magic or like understand a language that's being spoken to you. And uh, the big one is you can use it as an arcane eye. The big power is an arcane eye. So like you can send this thing really far away mm-hmm. to like do some crazy stuff and see through it. And mm-hmm. that's your big power that oh, you can great. use for the divination one. Um, I liked the illusion one. So illusion is a it's a, a it's a gold stone, and. Uh, you can do some little illusion stuff. It can magic mouth so it can talk and make it seem, seem to other people like the mm-hmm. skull is talking. Uh, it can throw its voice as like a ventriloquism kind of thing. It can make great. ghost sounds kind of stuff. Uh, but the big power is that it can do this like terrifying halluc- illus- uh, illusory thing. It can show a, your target the most terrifying thing it can imagine. Oh, wow. And it has to make this will save or like lose its mind and or like you know panic or run away mm-hmm. or whatever. The downside is that you also see the thing <laughs> that is scaring this guy. So, so you can scare yourself. So you get a bonus to your save. You get a plus four to your save because mm-hmm. you know this thing isn't real. Mm-hmm. But you're still seeing it, and it's still really scary. And it might just be the thing that you're also scared of. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know? So some of these are kind of fun. Like, you know, the evocation one's red. That's the fireball one. Like, fire magic. It gives you a constant effect of getting extra damage to any of your fire attacks. Yeah. You get plus two to any kind of fire spell you cast. You add two damage to it. Because um, you're imbued with this energy. It can shoot rays of fire. It can burn hands a couple times a day. And then the big one is it shoots a fireball. Mm. Uh, and the big downside to the big one is, like, you get a little bit of feedback from the damage. Right? You, you get... However many D6 you're rolling for the fireball, you take one point of damage for every D6 gotcha. you roll. Uh, that kind of thing. So, kind of thought there were some cool things that we could yeah, do with that. Yeah, I think so too. And uh, that, that leads us to uh, one of the, the other illustration that I did was uh, kind of casting like a fire uh, magic kind of spell through here. So, yeah. Yes. And you used... Yes, I used Ben's, <laughs> Ben's girlfriend as a model. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that one was really funny. We have a picture of it. Of It's just... We had to hold up a, a thing for her to look at and do the face. And yeah. I had to hold her hair up so it looked like it was blowing in the yes. wind. And then you're taking the picture. And then my mom yes. took a picture of us doing that. Yes. And Thais couldn't stop laughing so nobody could look at her while she was doing the face. <laughs> so what I had to end up doing is I had to take another pose and Thais's pose and kind of put them together for my finished pose. So, yeah, that's, that's what I ended up doing. <laughs> so uh, tell us more. Yeah, so we've got eight schools of magic. Mm -hmm. Abjuration, conjuration, divination, transmutation, necromancy, illusion, evocation, and enchantment. And so uh, the, uh, should we just do all of them? Sure. Okay. I know you guys want to hear about it. I do. (laughs) The abjuration one is a shield, right? So it gives you a bonus to your armor class, but it slows you down a little bit. Mm. Reduces your movement speed because you've got this shield, this ablative shielding that's like protecting you. It can shield, it can resist energy, and it can put you in, um, its main power is a big one. It's like a a globe of invulnerability, Mm. right? Which is great. It makes you kind of, you're basically immune to to having attacks come in at you. Downside of that is you can't attack out. Oh, okay. Gotcha. It's useful. There can Mm -hmm. be plenty of uses for that. I didn't want it to be like a nuke that they could carry with them. Sure. And also, like, some of these powers seem pretty powerful, but this will be a thing that your guy can go... You're not going to get all of these gems at level one, right? Yeah. Maybe you find the skull and one gem at, like, level three or four. Then, like, when you hit six, you find a second one, or you find out mm-hmm. there are more gems or whatever. And I like the idea that when you are finding these, this is a, it's a quest to find each one of these gems. You have to go through a dungeon and get it at the end of the dungeon. Mm-hmm. And you have to fight a guy. And, like, I liked the idea of, like... So the fire gem has good powers in it and stuff. But one of the things, I think I said this on my magic item video, is like I like I don't like giving parties magic items without having to be having to overcome the person carrying it. Yes. I don't like it's just like you want it now here's this yeah, here you go. magic yeah. sword. Have, have a uh, death star and yeah. have a good time. It's much more rewarding when you take it off of somebody else. Yeah. So I had the idea that some of these gems could be built into staffs, wizard staffs. Oh yeah. And so some you meet a guy who can use the staff against you 
you can't change the thing in and out of the staff. It's not interchangeable. It's tied to this thing, and the staff breaks when you pull the piece out. Mm -hmm. But this is a gem that you can now put into your skull. Yeah, I love and it. And so there's some cool stuff with that. Uh, uh, let's see. Conjuration is healing, mostly healing kind of stuff, because that's part of that. So mm -hmm. that makes it a little bit... I'm never a big fan of like dudes who just summon 800 million guys, yeah. and it makes it really hard to DM. It makes it hard to play. Mm -hmm. You have to like go through and be like, oh, I don't know what the magic old monkey has as his ability. <laughs> you know, <laughs> magic old monkey. Yeah, <laughs> that's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we got distracted there. Okay. Yeah, uh, the enchantment. So one of the things that the skull could do historically was scare people, right, and give you mm. visions. Mm -hmm. So the enchantment spell, that's what that does. It gives you like it can give visions and like crushing despair and you know uh, put them to sleep and there's all like there's some days monster like there's some like things that you can do to like darken other people oh, yeah. with the, with the enchantment skill uh, thing but the downside to that is that it darkens you as well and it makes people a little bit like when, the, oh, when you have that dark yeah. magic in the skull people don't like you as much right you, mm -hmm. it's bad for your charisma it's bad for getting like getting along with other people sure. Uh, the uh, the necromancy one is very powerful, mm. right? That's the black gem, the onyx, and uh, it is like bestowing curses, causing fear. Maybe at some point it can it can even kill people. Ah, uh, not something a good wizard would have. Yeah, it messes you up in that regard, right? It drains your life force, right? It takes oh. years off of your mm. life while you when you use it. If you're going to use some powerful the powerful version of it, it's going to like drain a year or two. Yeah. And I tried to tie the the powers. Because each one has like a little power, has a constant effect, a little power, and a big power. Mm -hmm. A big power has a downside, and I tried to make the downside match the power because they're not all equally powered. Yeah, some of the gems are better than others, mm -hmm. but for those ones, the downside's worse also. Yeah. So this is kind There's of a like lot of a, balance there. Yeah, because this isn't like a good item. This is an evil piece of equipment, and like maybe it's you know an old an old evil wizard created it or something. Sure. You don't have to be evil to use it, but this thing is dark magic. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, the transmutation one I liked. Uh, the transmutation gives uh, sentience to the skull. Okay. It becomes alive. Mm -hmm. And maybe with the soul of the wizard that created it or whatever it was modeled after or whatever. And it can fight for you. It can go off and attack things. It, it's its own character. You don't have to, like, it does its own thing. Oh, okay. And attacks and, like, can cast some spells and can do some interesting things. You can talk to it, ask it questions and stuff. But you don't control it. Mm. That's the downside it, of that. It's, it, he's off and running. He's off and doing his own thing. Okay. And like, if you make him mad, he might just run away and you have to go catch him. <laughs> or like, you know, uh, he's not going to do what you say. You, you have full control over this thing unless this gem's in it. Oh, gotcha. And it does some powerful things mm -hmm. when it has this gem in it, but it's a loose cannon at this yeah. point. It could just as likely turn the turn on the party. Yeah. You have to get those Very gems out Very interesting, there. yeah. Uh, yeah, so those are the different magic That's spells. That's fantastic. We've got I some cool it. art for it. Uh, it's a really cool item that you know is powerful, but that's one of the fun things where like you will. It's one. I feel like this is an item that will define your character to the point where I like think so too. Two years after the quest is over, you'll be like, oh, what, which guy was that? Oh, that was the Crystal Skull guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it could be really fun. It could be a really fun thing to include I think in your so campaign. Too. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you guys. Bye bye.